Pouring numbers like equations Trench talk When you jump up off the porch as a young And start posting on the block with the junkies And get it bounced My experiences with black women growing up wasn't so good When I started dating white girls My first experience with white girls is when I went to college I tried to date some black girls when I was in college They did not like me I was skinny I right. was strong Right. I was I was teased from high school, even college. I got teased for being dark skinned. Damn, so they, tease, was, they tease you, cuz? Yeah. So there was a lot of self, a lot of self esteem issues. Right, right, right. No, I'm I'm being I'm being yeah. dead honest. So when I if, when I got my opportunity, when my my first experience with a white girl, I'm like, okay, it wasn't bad, but that wasn't. I just gr totally gravitated to to white girls after that. Right. That wasn't the situation. So again, my experiences with black women growing up wasn't so good. So, but that still didn't deter me from still dating or pursuing right. black girls. Right. So my thing now is <clears throat> because I know there's this stigma, uh, the stigma, the, the stereotypical of, of athletes, you know, to, to to go off and make money, this and that, and and date uh, the opposite color, mm -hmm. opposite race. But for me now, where I am, it's not even about it's not even about about color it's not even about race mm -hmm. for me it's about somebody that i have some chemistry with mm -hmm. good energy and a, and i get a good vibe with right. that's that's where i am like i said we all want somebody that's attractive right you right. know what i mean instead it's going to play a big part in it don't, anybody that says oh well i don't care what the person looks like that's a lie that's a lie we all want somebody that we can roll over and wake up to that's you know what i mean that looks pleasing to the eye. Everybody's experiences have been different. For me, when I grew when I grew up, I tried. I was in my my high school. Pretty much, it's fifty. I don't know what percentage black white, but I lived in a black neighborhood. So, at the end of the day, I attempted to date black girls when I was younger. I wasn't as handsome as I am now. I didn't oh. have this beautiful smile as I had as yeah. I have now. As I have now, yeah, and I, yeah, puberty. Right, I was a late, I was a late bloomer. Yeah, and when I bloom, boy, did I bloom. Good, was good. How y'all feeling out there today, man? You back tuning to your boy being there, Charlie, Charlie's Vision YouTube channel, man. Terrell Owens, man. He came out the bag, man, and told the world how what he was going through in his experiences with black women and white women and dating outside his race and things of that nature. And what is my thoughts on his preference, you know what I mean, and his thought process of what he feel about, you know what I mean, his decision making on it now, right? That's what I feel though, man. I think we all been through those stories of what he said, especially me as a bigger guy and living in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? And a lot of women, black women in, uh, that we've seen, like I said, I can't speak for a lot of other coaches because I haven't had a lot of experiences with them, but I know within our culture, yeah, like if you don't look a certain way, you too dark skinned or you big or they think you look this or that way, they're going to tell you that and you're going to see the energy of that. I experienced that like my whole life going through from elementary to middle to just with, the, you know what I mean? You always have those experiences like where it, it takes a piece of you to see somebody degrade you like that. You know what I mean? And if they're not, they tolerating you and never celebrating you, of course, you're going to look outside of your race and see is it something different. But you're gonna have a different preference because of the pain that you felt of the rejection. You know what I mean? Like I say, if you rejected a woman a lot and you you, you bashed her like that, she gonna have a different imagery of black men. You know what I mean? I feel like that's all he went through. I went through the same thing as a kid. You know what I'm saying? And still to this day, I think I see uh, energies like that in our culture, where it's like even if you had a relationship with a black woman, she'll never call you, she'll never text you, she'll never speak to you. It's just like a different energy, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, I don't know. It's this energy of them better than you. You know what I mean? I think that's what happened in the coaches. A lot of women that just feel that they better than you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That you are not on their level. That they, You know what I'm saying? That's why you see them with the dope boys and things of that nature. And I seen somebody come out and say the, the white women ain't start liking him until he started grabbing a football or something like that. You know what I mean? I guess he, I'm just like, where'd that come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like, man, if if you're going through all that pain and, and, and you don't see no out in those situations, of course you're going to try to try something different because you won't love just like everybody else won't love. You know what I mean? And, and, and like I said before, like if you get rich and, and get successful and all of a sudden those black women that used to dish you and hurt you, 
look at you now and they want to be with you, it is, it's not going to be authentic. The Michael, let's use Michael B. Jordan, right? Remember the girl used to say he was a nerd and, you know what I'm saying, lame and all of this different thing. Then see Michael B. Jordan now at the Creed uh, uh, premiere or whatever, and then all of a sudden she like so into him. He's so amazing. So many women like him now. You know what I mean? Look at the old Drake to the new Drake. You know what I'm saying? It's just like the evolving. I don't feel like nobody, a lot of women like to do that thing where they stick with they do until they get to the top. Is the, the reason why the movie Acrimony was made. You know what I mean? The dude working on something for years and it's like, nah, forget you. I'm ready to get divorced. I'm tired of you. And then he hit the millions and then his heart still loved that individual. So he give her money and she still try to kill him at the end. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's the world we live in. It's, it's, it's all the negative things that we seeing on TV and things and what being taught in the homes. You know what I'm saying? So hell yeah. I remember uh, when I was a kid, man, I think I was, it was at like a Bible study at somebody's house, man. And I remember I was a little kid. And I go up and I remember the girls was just like calling me ugly, all type of stuff, man. And I'm a little kid. I run out of the house and crying and stuff like that. And I just remember those days. I remember them days when I was tortured or, or uh, you know what I mean, talked down on, you big, you this, you that. I remember all of that stuff. It, it always would be in my memory. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think about somebody become rich and successful and famous He's not going to go to a place where people used to hurt him. You know what I'm saying? Somebody hurt you, didn't appreciate you, didn't have no love for you. And I felt like in my earlier years, I felt like a lot of black women used me as a punching bag. As far as like they would have those bad relationships they get with you, knowing you're going to get nothing but pure love. But they don't love you, so they just use all their anger on you to try to hurt you, to down you, and do all these evil things. You know what I'm saying? So... And this is not all, it's just, it's just those particular ones that shaped our mind and believing that, you know what I mean, maybe we can't find it the, the same thing, that happiness within the culture, you know what I'm saying, like I said. But I, I don't I, I don't knock him for what he said, that was his experience. His, I think we a lot of us experience that, you know what I mean, unless you grew up, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 extremely uh, attractive male or something like that, or somebody that had a lot of money, you wasn't appreciated or love in your community. Like, I still to this day don't see that love. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Like, you don't really see that love like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I don't feel like nobody should bash him because that was his experiences. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. Now, like I said, when you go to white and different race, they, they are taught different. Spanish women are taught different from black women. White women are taught different from black women. They are taught completely different. That's why you might, if you, I'm not going to say the numbers, but I, I believe you will find more feminine energy in those other race than you would in our race. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's almost like dating your homeboy when you did a lot of black women nowadays because they so harsh and cold. You know what I mean? And then it's like to be with a woman that don't identify what they want or know, that's even worse. I, I mean, I think being with a woman that's not, this, this is one of the things I used to deal with dating uh, black women and stuff like that. It's having that thing where they don't know for sure what they want. You know what I mean? And that's scary to go through that honeymoon stage and the, and the person just don't know what they want. And then they just fishing through life, through all these different individuals. Because, you know, in the, in the, in the community, any black man will mess with any type of female. So they just fishing through dudes, fishing through dudes. They never have a marriage at the end of the tunnel of what they're doing. And their personality would never be able to be in a marriage because they're so dark. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't feel nothing wrong with what T.O. Uh, was saying, you know what I mean, to Ocho. You know what I mean? Some people date black women and they find the right ones. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard as hell to find the right ones nowadays because we in the mentality of the sexy reds and the whole mentality where it's okay to be a whore and to degrade yourself and to treat men like trash. And it's like everywhere we go, even when I look, I'm going to get on that uh, Ebony K thing too, like even with her, like coming out saying, saying what she said, I thought she was all fake with that. You know what I mean? I really do. I, I felt like she was fake with her commentary. I don't, I, don't, I believe she was just saying something to get clicks and likes because I don't feel like that's how she truly feel. You know what I mean? And the two times the, the man called the phone and she said, no, hang it up. You know what I mean? She don't really feel that way about, that's why I say I, the black women that we are surrounded with, a lot of times in the communities, they just acting. They don't really like black men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. Like, a lot of them don't. They have sex and stuff with them, but they don't like them at all, bro. Like, they really have a hatred in their heart for them. And it started from a young age, from not hating their father, hating their uncles, hating all these people. And then telling all these fake stories on people to try to tear them down, bro. Like, 
like I said before, I've seen it a lot in the community. So like I said, I'm a big dude. So of course I deal with the, the harshest of the harshest. That's why people always ask, like, why are you so quiet back in the days and this and that? Now and I talk a lot more. It's because of those experiences. Those experiences shape my mental and how I think. As a kid, you got to think I'm a kid and I'm dealing with people tearing me down, saying the most negative things they could possibly say about me. It didn't make me feel good. That shit didn't make me feel good. When I see the, a, a person of my own culture, you know what I mean, that I'm, I'm thinking supposed to have love for me, don't have love for me. And it will rip me to shreds and humiliate and embarrass me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I went into that phase of my life when I was a kid, early adult, where I just didn't want to talk. I didn't want to be a part of that. Because I felt like when I was chill with my homeboys and stuff like that, and certain females would come around, they use you as a, a, a joking tool or somebody to belittle while they doing they flirting. They want to belittle you, tear you down, say the worst, worst shit they could possibly say to you. You know what I mean? Or just look down on you completely. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt. But like, so I don't think Tara Owens said anything wrong. You know I mean? Like you said, he's looking for the vibe and the energy. You know what I'm saying? But like I tell you before, like the women that's being produced and coming out, they really don't have that love for black women, a black man, because they was never taught to love a black man. They was never taught to love a black man. We ain't shit. We ain't, we dogs. We, we always being belittled by our own women, bro. Like forever, like belittled, trash. Like, you know what I mean? Forever, dog. Like, and I, like I just, I just I think about all the past relationships I had with black women. And I can only name one or two women that I, that was black women that I looked at as respectable women. Everybody else was the coldest as they could possibly be. They didn't give a F about me as a person or none of that. They was cool with tearing me apart because some dude did them wrong. They was cool with that. You deserve it. You this and that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it ain't no love there a lot of times, bro. Like, I see that nowadays. Like, you, you, you be on social media. You could be on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And your own family members won't even speak to you. Homegirls that you go to school with won't even speak to you. They don't, like I told you, this is why they, you see them black guys when they get successful, go to a different race because they feel like they're being celebrated. Who want to be around a bunch of women that just tolerating you? They don't really love or care about you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a hurtful feeling, but at the end of the day, you just got to deal with what with, with God put put before you. You know what I'm saying? But I deal with that shit all the time. I see it all the time, bro. When I see different black women, it's just like, if I was rich the day or tomorrow, you know what I'm saying, and I'm single, would my first preference be a black woman? Hell no. <laughs> I'm being honest. Hell no. Because I never had a bunch of good experiences. Not even fucking dating. Just life experience in general. I had a lot of dark experiences with black women that tried to just destroy me just off of how I look or my body size. Or, you, you know what I mean? You're big, you dick small. You're, like every insult a black woman could say about you just for being a bigger guy, they would say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just keeping it real, bro. And all of those comments that be coming on social media, most of that shit come from black women. <laughs> just being real, bro. Like if you really look at your story and shit like that, black women. Black women, black women, black women. Just degrading to the fullest power. You know what I'm saying? Do you really see a lot of white women coming on the motherfucking posters talking about black men? <laughs> you know, just being real, man. You just don't see that shit like that. You know what I mean? Like I say, they say white is all right. That's some bullshit. But like I said before, what we deal with in our own culture be so hurtful. It make a nigga like T.O. or somebody that's rich and successful say, I don't want to experience that shit no more. I don't want to experience that shit. I don't want to experience that pain. No, I want to experience me falling in love with a woman and she can't even see herself in the future with me. I don't want to experience that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to experience the pain. I don't want to be experience the degrading. I don't want to experience none of that shit no more of what you tolerating me and don't even love me. So he ain't saying shit wrong. That was his experience. We all have a different experience based on how we look in our community. You think I had it easy? Fuck no. They told me the squares as a kid. Like, they degraded me to the... I like, why you always quiet? Why you don't want to talk? Nigga, I was being punished in my community, nigga. Love me? Where? <laughs> Celebrate me? Where, nigga? They never celebrated me. They never... None of that shit, bro. Every black woman that was around me most of the time is only a bare few that really show love. Probably 1%. The rest of them? 
Man, they did me so dirty, bro. It ain't even funny, nigga. <laughs> they did you dirty, bro, like that. And, and they didn't give a fuck how dirty they did you. They will fucking humiliate you, embarrass you, tell you the shreds, and just don't give a fuck. They don't care. You don't mean shit to nobody. That's how they treated you. Like pure trash. You know what I'm saying? So him being dark skinned, I get that. You too dark, you ugly as hell. You too big, you ugly as hell. You meat small, all type of fucked up shit they can say about you. They hurt you. And then you a man, you be okay. You a man, right? So you a man, so you could just fucking destroy me mentally over and over again just because I'm a man and say that shit okay. Right? That's why they say being a nice guy and all that shit, that don't mean shit. Because you ain't dealing in a, uh, a world full of uh, effeminate women. They don't give a fuck about none of that shit. So, yeah, you see all these athletes. Just think about it, right? This this make this make sense, right? You see all these athletes with these different white and Spanish women. At more of the higher amount as far as black, right? So, what do they tell you? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being honest. What do they tell you, bro? They've been getting fucked up their whole life by these black women, bro. Like degraded like a bitch by black women. Your daddy ain't shit. Like everything about a black man in our community ain't shit. That shit hurtful as hell. To be have Father's Day and every black woman talking down on dads. It's like no, there's no good ones out there. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember I used to have my Facebook used to be locked and loaded with black women just destroying black men on Father's Day. To even see your kin folks look down on their own fathers and shit. I don't celebrate Father's Day, this and that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro, our community fucked up, man. And that just is real. What I experienced was harsh, bro. Like, I wouldn't wish my... I wouldn't give my my beginning stages to nobody, bro. Like, nigga, I got treated so motherfucking bad. It was, like, it was the worst of, worst ever, bro. Like, the absolute worst. I'm talking about... I remember one time we would... A couple of guys from the neighborhood would go to the mall and we, you know I mean, everybody trying, we young kids and shit, middle school, some shit like that. We trying to talk to the girls and I remember the, I tried to talk to that. Everybody was like, go ahead, Charlie, go talk. They were trying to each, the older kids was trying to teach the younger kids how to talk to women and stuff like that. And they took us out there and we'd go talk. And I remember what the girls said and all of that. And it was just like harsh. And everybody like, oh, nah, bro. Like, hell no. Nah. Everybody was defending me when she did that shit. Like, she just straight up, like just cut me in half and just threw me out you know what I mean to the to fuck the sharks man so yeah like I said before like if you having those type of experiences like that bro you just and you get rich as hell you ain't gonna wanna go back to that shit you gonna be like fuck that oh, that shit I know they don't love me for real I, I like even when the, with the black lady said that um they started liking him when he played football how would he know cause he ain't been in that community but he know damn well them black girls that was in that community didn't fuck him like him so for him to get rich and successful and then they like, like him now, Michael B. Jordan now, T.O. now, he know damn well. He know damn well how harsh they used to fucking treat him. To be rich as hell and to go back to that shit? Fuck no, G. Fuck no, G. It ain't no way in hell, bro. I'm going back to that shit. After how harsh they treated me and I'm rich and successful, I ain't never going to go back. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's how I would think, bro. Like, if I'm rich and successful, I would never go to that shit. Because I know that ain't real. If y'all love me and like to me at that, at when I was at my lowest, then I know you like to me for real. But if I'm rich as hell and successful now, you like me? I know you lying. You gonna write me now? Inbox me now? I know you lying. <laughs> I know you lying. I know you lying like a motherfucker, man. But like I said, this this black woman and black man, this, this thing that's going back and forth, the truth is the truth, bro. The truth is the truth, bro. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can't take nothing from T.O. for how you feel. Because we all... There's a lot of niggas that experience that. Especially me being a big dude. I definitely experienced that shit. Like, in the harshest and most fucked up way you can possibly explain or say. You know what I mean? Like I said, as I get older, I started... You know, a lot of people get kids. A lot of people start to mature more. And they look at life differently. But at the end of the day, the beginning was the harshest shit like, my friends, like, literally, man, the shit that I had to deal with as kids, nigga, if I ain't had good friends, I'd probably be fucking dead somewhere, nigga. Like, that's how harsh that shit was. It was fucked up for me. Like, real fucked up. If I ain't had Dre or somebody, nigga, I probably wouldn't be here today. Man, how bad they treated me in the neighborhoods and shit like that. They treated me like pure fucking trash, dog. Like, straight up, it be times, like, my homie, he'll be like, they'll be trying to get him to do shit, and he'll be like, nah, bro, I ain't leaving Charlie out there, this and that. 
Like, it'll be that fucking harsh where they'll try to even, like, just degrade you. Like, period, bro. Like, just all the way degrade. And like I said, him, Dre being a good friend, you know what I mean, that he was, he never left me in the cold. That nigga would, he was, like I said, he one of the purest niggas I ever knew in my life, like, straight up, because I felt like he was always that protector type. I guess that's what the Leo's, he, he was one of them type of people, man, that I felt like he really, he really was the type of person, like, that would never leave you hanging, that would never abandon you, would never allow just a piece of pussy to influence his decision making and that's why i always had like the highest respect for him because he he was a type of nigga that was like that's my man's he they, they really did him dirty i ain't gonna let leave him like that i'm gonna go check on my man's because he knew in his mind i could fuck that bitch any time <laughs> you know what i'm saying he knew in his mind all, like, i could fuck that bitch any time but the scars that they get in this nigga he ain't gonna be able to recover from this shit so i'm gonna go fuck i'm gonna go holler at my man's and make sure he's straight that's what Dre was. I really never, I really never had a lot of women that was like the Dre personality when it came to females. You know what I'm saying? It's only like, like I say, like that one percent. But most of the women in the community was harsh as fuck towards me, like harsh as a bitch. Still to this day, when I deal with that shit, I just be like, "What the fuck is this?" Like you know, what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I get what T.O. was saying, bro. I get it. I understand it because, like I say, most people that they was. Rich that Dan Lamar, they probably wouldn't date in the same race. They wouldn't date black women at all because of the hard shit that we dealt with, the teasing, the the humiliation, the embarrassment, the belittling. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I just don't see it, bro. And I had numbers. There's a lot of people that just go outside the race because they feel like it's no happiness there. They just tolerate. To be with a woman that just tolerates you and not love you is the worst shit ever. And for to be surrounded with women that look down on you, you big, you this and that, and they just like look at you as purity dirt that they walk over top of. I'm better than you. I'm this and that. It's the worst feeling that a nigga can ever experience. And like I say, for me, my younger age growing up, that's all I experienced was just hatred and, and, and dislike and, and dismiss and shit like that. In the mix of all that cloud of darkness, it was like that one percent would actually show me those connections and that love but the majority was brutal like nigga brutal i mean i'm gonna talk so bad about you man that when you wake up the next day you still feel pain you know what i'm saying that's what i dealt with and people's always like damn why you ain't used to talk that much or why you ain't used to do that nigga i was tortured nigga i was never i was never celebrated i never was loved like that nobody gave a fuck about me like that Nigga, I went so, through so much pain and so much belittling and shit. And this ain't from my mama. My mama loved the fuck out of me. You know what I'm saying? It was just the, the women in the community. I would say more women than anything because the dudes, you hung with the dudes, you chill with the dudes and shit like that. It was really mostly the women, bro. Like, I never really, like, every beef that I had came from something that a woman did. Like, real street shit when niggas get about to get shot, all type of crazy. It was a woman, bro. Like, it wasn't no niggas that I'd be hanging around straight killers. Went and none of them niggas try to fuck with me, hurt me, none of that. You bring 10 women around, you bring 10 of the craziest niggas in the neighborhood. The craziest niggas in the neighborhood, we blowing smoke, chilling, relaxing, drinking. Bring them 10 crazy women into the mix of the 10 gangster guys, and I'm about to get killed. Just because you brought them women in there in that community. I'm, I'm not, bro, I ain't telling no lies, bro. I ain't telling no lies. It is something about That's why. I, when I was in the community, a lot of times I would just stay quiet. I wouldn't talk at all because I felt like they targeted me. I felt that shit. Like, the way you look and shit like that, they may like this nigga over here, like this nigga over here, but I'm going to pick on you and crack jokes on you and belittle you in the meantime. This going to be my entertainment is just to fuck with you and belittle the fuck out you as much as I possibly can because it's entertaining to me. Why I'm hurting and feeling pain, they entertained by that shit. That's why I used to be quiet. I ain't used to talk for real. I used to just be quiet because I felt like that's what they used to do to me. Like, and that's why everybody like, like it took a while for me to grow out of that shit because of the psychological and all the pain that I felt over the years of when they used to do that shit. And that's what they always do. We had groups of get girls coming over and we was all with the guys and shit like that as a youngin. You know what I mean? That's what normally happened. Oh, the biggest nigga in the room. You know what I mean? Let me joke on him. Let me joke his shoe side. Let me joke his face. Let me joke. Let me say all type of harsh, fucked up shit to him. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the other guys, they don't really do the same shit to them. They don't really say the same or do the same shit. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's like, of course, if I'm rich today and tomorrow, right, and I'm and, and I'm single, would I go to that? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. You just not going to want to feel that pain no more. That, that shit is painful. Nigga, we human just like everybody. That's because we in the masculine form and we man. I don't mean we don't feel no pain, nigga. Nigga, shoot me. I feel pain. You know what I'm saying? I'm human just like everybody else. And they think, oh, you you a man. This year. You just a man. Like, no, it don't. Nigga, somebody psychologically as you a kid from a young age, always calling you ugly, always calling you fat, nasty, all type of fucked up ass names. You ain't going to grow up and think you some amazing man. You're going to think you a nothing, bro. For people to always say negative and fucked up shit about you all the time. So, like, how the fuck? I don't understand people's concept of that shit. I was tortured as a kid. Seriously. <laughs> like, seriously, man. When it came to the women, I was tortured, nigga, like, badly, bro, in the worst way. So it's like, nowadays, like, as I got older and I was dating and shit like that, I just, in my mind, I just always seen that reflection of what they used to do to me. And then when I got in those relationships, I would see the same thing, where it was like, no matter how much I loved them, no matter how much I cared about them, they just hated me, purely just hated me. Just for who I was, how I looked and shit. They just purely hated me. It was no love there. They ain't gonna never call my phone and, how you doing, bro? You all right? This and that. It was none of that shit in my community, bro. Like, none. Of, still to this day, that none. Of, that was never no celebration of none of that shit. It was all I'm gonna do is spit in your face. Like I say, with niggas that saved me was draining them. Like, I believe if we, I believe, I truly believe in my, my heart of hearts. My mama... And Dre, my best friend, I believe that I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for them niggas. If Dre wasn't here, I don't think I'd be here. Trey won't here, I don't think I'd be here. Because of the, the fucked up shit they used to do to me, bro. Like, they used to do some... I can't even say on camera all the fucked up shit they used to do to me. They used to do some fucked up shit to me, bro. So it's like, when niggas like, damn, Tyler, why you say this and that, do that and that, bro, nigga? I know it. some people go through bad relationships and this and that. I get that. But the shit that I dealt with won't even no relationship. I'm just going to hurt you. I'm just going to belittle you. Your clothes, shoes, I'm just going to fucking destroy you. Because I just hate you. Right? That's what they did to me, bro. I should be Jason right now, nigga. I should be motherfucking one of these killer serial niggas, man. That's who I should be from all the damage I've done. But I got to thank God that I'm not that. I got to thank Dre. I got to thank my mother. Because without them, I wouldn't be the nigga that's sitting before you feeling happy, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be able to smile, bro. I, I promise you, man. In my neighborhood and what I went through as a kid, man, it was fucked up, bro. Fucked up. My my experience with, with most black... I had better experiences with guy, uh, guy, black guys than males. I mean, I, mean, I mean, better experiences with the homies than the females. The females treated me like pure trash, man. <laughs> Like, pure trash, man. And like I said before, this is, why, this is the reason why when people used to see me earlier and back in the days, I was so quiet because that damage is still, it still walked with me to this day. All the fucked up and harsh things they did to me, the humiliation. Nigga, I could do a whole movie, nigga, on Lifetime, bitch. <laughs> on Tubi, nigga. Of the fucked up shit I experienced. Just, just being taught to be a loving man. And going into a world where these women look as a straight savages. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hell nah, bro. Like, I don't feel no tight way with T.O. said. I understand where you're coming from. And I tell you right now, if I was rich like that, successful like that, and I had them experiences and shit, I wouldn't, I would have never dated a black woman a, 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 a day in my life. <laughs> because of what I experienced. I'm not just saying this shit for this to be saying this shit. Nigga, if a, if a woman could just touch my skin and see what I'm talking about, they'd be like, whoa. They'd come out that bitch like, whoa. Damn, they did that shit to you? I can literally tell you stories that'll make motherfuckers cry. Like, real rap. Like, the fucked up shit, nigga. Like, so, nah, bro. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. That's why I don't hold them, G. I don't hold them. You know what I'm saying? But like I said before, bro, like, those experiences fucked me up. Going going into becoming a grown man, like an adult man, it... It affected me through my life, bro. Like, it just affected my mental. I just never really was able to get, heal through those scars that they caused me in my younger days, man. And just walking in life, it was just the worst shit ever I ever experienced, man.
and I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy, but I just got to thank God for the people that he put around me, bro, because I don't think I'd be here today if it wasn't for those individuals standing in the gap like that, because like I say, in my community, the black women that was around, the 1% of them actually cared about me. The rest of them, nigga, fuck you, nigga. I'm going to do you dirty. <laughs> That's why I had so many people trying to protect me from different women and different people because they already knew this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's all I got to say about that. I'm out, G. A will to win a healthy life. All natural products. Come join the new movement, guys. We got products in different categories such as sports, weight loss, beauty, and also household products. That's all made all natural. Click the link in the description. Hey, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit that like button. And when you hit that notification bell, it will always let you know every time that I upload new content.